Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to do a little bit of procreation. And obviously these innuendos and puns write themselves when you're talking about a program called Procreate. And many of you have, may not have heard of this one because this is an iPad application, but something just happened with this application that is pretty big in the world of game development, and that is it just got 3D texture painting. Now you may have heard of Procreate in the past because it is a quite popular natural media painting style application on the iPad. And the iPad is just such a natural tool for doing this kind of work. It's a stylus, a display, um, and a computing device all built into one. So if you're, you know, trying to do that painting kind of workflow, well, this one is pretty natural to work with. And if you've got a reasonably new um, iPad, you'll also find the performance of it is great. So you can see a traditional painting style app. You can zoom in, zoom out. Uh, this is on uh, this year's uh, low end 2021 Pro. And as you can see here, we can... Um, definitely move things around nice and fast. This is the traditional 2D painting workflow. See here, you've got layer support with all your traditional drawing modes and so on. Um, let me go back to normal on that one. Uh, you have a variety of different brushes available from just traditional sketching and inking uh, to texturing and abstract bro bro uh, blah, 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 brushes. So you do some charcoal. So let's do uh, burnt tree charcoal. Come over here, you got palette tools. You've even got the ability to actually create palettes from files or from um, scratch if you wish, or from a photo that you wanna take. Some pretty cool stuff there, but here I'm just gonna do some green. Over here, you've got uh, control over uh, the size of said brush and the opacity of said brush. And then your painting is pretty natural like so. So this is traditional Procreate. Not gonna get into that. We're instead going to talk about Procreate 5.2's release where they went into the world of 3D. So if you wanna add a number of 3D models to work with, you can bring models in in OBJ, work, in OBJ format, which is a pretty universal standard for um, non-animated meshes. But you can also come here to what's new and download the model pack. And this will give you a number of models that are already set up and ready to go. Because you're going to find your models need to have proper UV set up for them to work in Procreate. And a lot of the random models I brought in have not worked great. So just a bit of a warning. You might have a bit of a fight getting your UV set up and Procreate to be friends with each other. But now that we've got that, we'll go back to the gallery here and let us work in 3D. So I'm going to bring up the skateboard model right here. And you're going to find the workflow is virtually identical. So we got our, um, here is our skateboard. It's actually been split. The, you UVs have been split into three sections, the trucks, the wheels, and the uh, board itself. And what I could do is something really simple here. So I can grab the wheel layer. There it is. You can see the colors that it works with. I can actually just select it uh, and do a fill. And there, boom, you see our wheels are now a different color. I could actually obviously pick, let's do purple because that is the natural color for skateboard wheels. Go back here again, middle layer and fill. So you can do uh, rapid fills like so. And then, of course, we could also on the, the bottom of our deck where there's often, you know, um, logos and so on and so forth. Here's where we could do, you could bring your artistic abilities um, to the forefront. So let's do that. Again, I'm moving around the environment very simply, uh, basically pinch to zoom and then one finger rotates and orbits like so. Um, and it's obviously using, and I'm using the Apple Pencil in this case. It is pressure aware and angle aware and so on. So let's just do a... Let's see what's going on. What's wrong with this this setup? I should be fine. My brush, let's paint with some syrup. And what, what do we have selected? So we have the, oh, board. All right, so let's pick the board. That was my problem. So here I go, and I can just basically start doing painting stuff. So let's do game. Why am I that color? That should be fine. Why is my color not the color I picked? I don't know what happened there, but game from scratch. All right, so there you go. So you can paint the bottom. Obviously, you, you could do whatever you want. By the way, you can also do a uh, two-finger tap, undoes whatever you just did, like so. So it's a pretty natural and floating workflow. So again, let's come in here, game over. So there's my extreme board, dude. Uh, let's do something different color. All right. And you can zoom in as much as you want. Again, brush size control is available over there. Let's just do a happy face. All right, there you go. So you can simply draw or paint whatever you want in the world of 3D. Now, the cool thing here is you see here at the top of the board where you've got the textured surface there. Well, you generally want this to be a little rough or ragged. Well, what we can do here 
So we can come into this guy. So I'm going to go back to the layer selection and I'm going to pick the uh, board like so. And notice here, we've got, again, we've got controls over how it's painted, but we can also do this 3D view. And what we'll see here is we can actually paint the direct color channel, which is what we've been doing so far. Uh, but we can also come in here and paint the roughness channel. Now you'll notice from my painting before, uh, some of the paint actually already went on the roughness channel, but we can do this uh, by hand ourselves. So let's come in here, there's our roughness. Come up here, we could grab, let's do a textured brush of polka dots, like so. And a roughness map is either uh, all black or all white. So we've got kind of a close to black, uh, close to white color, I mean, here. So now we can paint, and there you see the texture showing up on that surface. Same thing, I could come here, we could go darker on that, and we'll go the opposite direction. So that will be uh, creating a roughness and normal map uh, that will interact with the lighting on the surface. So you actually have fine-tuned control over, same thing with metallic. I'll show you metallic in action in just a second. And the cool thing is this interacts with the lighting model, and I suppose now that we're talking about lighting model, let's get into that for a sec. Come up over here, you can go over to 3D here. By the way, you've got the ability to show just the uh, texture. So if you want to paint the texture in uh, just traditional 2D, you have that option as well. I can go back here, show it in 3D, and then we've got the ability to say, okay, edit lighting and environment. And now we can actually change how the lights in our world look, position them elsewhere. We can change the strength of them. We've also got control over the HDRI or the environment map here. There's a number of them that are defined. So you can switch the way the lighting works in the scenes, or you can actually just turn that one off completely. At the same time, you've got the ability with these lights to interact. So see the edge of the board as the light gets closer and further away. Uh, we can add another light into our scene and double tap the light and you got control over. So let's make the intensity really high or low on that. Uh, you can change the color or the hue of it like so. And then of course we've got the ability to move it in. So you can set up the lighting however you wish, like so. So now let's talk for a brief second about the metallicness. All right, I may have screwed that up a little bit because I made a super intense light. But now here we go. And now let's go back to the layers. We'll go to the, actually the trucks will be a good example. So. Here you can see the trucks in action right there, and the roughness and the uh, metallicness of that map are being uh, reflected by the light. So here we got, uh, so for the trucks, let's open that one up, go to the 3D of it. Here is your metalness map. Uh, the darker something is, something is, the more metal it is. So let's go ahead and paint over some of this. And there you see it becoming less metallic in I paint. So I'm still painting in that polka dot texture look, but then it will interact accordingly with the scene. So let's go to make it dark instead, so black. And there you see how the light will interact with that surface now. So there's some really cool features and functionality if you are working in 3D. Now another area where you often find yourself working in 3D is placing existing textures on the scene and they got you covered here as well. So let's go back to the gallery for a second. Let's pick the, uh, the soda can example, pretty straightforward. This guy is broken into a couple of different layers. The lip, the lip, a lid, sorry, the tab, and then finally the can. It's the can that we were most interested in. Again, you got control over the roughness, the metallicness, and the color of this particular channel. We could just start by doing, so say we wanted to be a different color, we could do uh, a fill straight away. So there we have our green pop. But what we find ourselves wanting to do is, okay, well this pop should definitely have some kind of a logo. So now we can go to the view of it and go back here to the gear here. We can go to add and then we can either take a photo or we can insert a photo. So I'm going to bring a photo in. Let's bring in a logo for our pop like so. And now we can go to advanced placement. We can scale that guy in different directions like so, like so. And I, I accidentally rotated it slightly like that. We can warp it in different directions and so on that, I think I need to go back to automatic to move it. There we go, so we can place it in the world. Now my my slurm uh, here is uh, not flawless, but you can see how quickly and easily you can actually place existing images into the 3D world. And then of course I could come in here and we can do uh, work on, so we could add to the metalness of our actual inserted image if we wish. I don't know if I do a fill on that if we'd have a problem, but let's come, so let's do roughness. All right, so here we go. And let's paint in, so let's grab something here for, uh, let's do a spray paint, flicks. And black will be full rough, I think. We'll find out in a second. No, black will be no rough. I should remember that at some point in time. So there you see, we're adding some roughness over top of our logo. 
And you can see that should be confined to my logo. Now it's spraying over a little bit. I wasn't expecting that. All right, so here we go. So we're adding some roughness layers in. All right, so we now have a rough logo. And again, we can come back and do the same kind of thing on the whole can itself. So here we are on the base layer. We can do special effects here. So we'll come in here and we do uh, something like, uh, was it an abstract? No. You can do like star, oh, it must be luminous. Okay, so I wanted to do like a color flare. This is on the paint, not on the lighting, by the way. But we come in here and let's say mostly green, white, like so. And we could do like a color flare on a can, like so. So you can start coming in here and making your magic happen however you wish. There is our magical can. And before I finish this, so hopefully you can see how this could be used for your texturing. Again, there is a couple problems with your workflow. You're going to have to bring your object in fully UV textured, sorry, UV uh, mapped. Uh, from some kind of a source. I found, for example, uh, Nomad Sculpt would work great with this. Unfortunately, Nomad Sculpt does not do UV texturing, so you couldn't just easily bring it over. So that is one of the downsides, and I hope they add some kind of a, an auto UV texture uh, or something to that in future Procreate versions. Uh, but if you're bringing something in from, say, Blender or something, just make sure that you've set up your texture channels right. And obviously, you're going to want to name them separately if you want to have this kind of behavior. And if you're going to use floods and fills and so on, you're going to want to have multiple texture channels if you can. Uh, once you've got your work down however you wish, you can go ahead and uh, share it out. In this particular case, you can share the model out in OBJ USDZ, which is uh, ZBrush's format, or in Procreate's own format. Uh, you can also make an image or a rendering of it. And then finally, you'll notice at the bottom here, you can export your textures out as PNGs, which you then use um, you know, however you wish in your own game. Another neat thing that you can do here is if we go back to the 3D tab, you can actually view things in augmented reality. So my can is being rendered. All right, it is done. You're seeing black because my thing is flat down on my workspace. So here we go. We'll zoom out. There is my, oop, there we go. So there is my pop in the world. Uh, I can orbit it, 3D it, I can place it in different places. So here we are in my workspace. Let's go have my, let's put the pop on top of my laptop if you so wish, or on top of my keyboard, or go over here and put it on top of my MacBook. Doesn't really matter where you put it. All I know is you've got AR support if you wish, and this can also be shared as well by clicking up here. So uh, pretty cool stuff on the whole. Uh, it is a version one kind of product, so, well, Procreate isn't. Procreate is a super mature tool, and in terms of the uh, painting workflow and work set, if you're a traditional 2D artist, you'll love working with Procreate. But if you want to take that workflow to a texturing level, well, that's what Procreate 5.2 is all about, and it's a free upgrade. And Procreate itself is a $10 purchase. Like I said, I purchased this years ago, and I keep getting updates. So a pretty neat development on the whole, and uh, kind of why I am showcasing an iPad painting application here on the channel. It's amazing. The iPad is becoming more and more relevant to the world of um, content creation, for sure. It's just a natural way to work with a lot of things. And I can see how people would appreciate this as a texturing workflow over something like the much, much, much more powerful and more complicated programs such as um, Substance Painter. Uh, this is kind of an alternative out there. And it's an interesting one. I definitely think it is worth showcasing but I'd be interested to know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later.